Hey, how you doing? I'm Brett Butler, and I'm the media manager here at the University of Canberra. So, effectively, I think I'm the human help menu. Where I make sure all the computers and systems work and uh, that students and staff can come in here and do their job and do their work. Uh, on top of that, I do some first year tutoring and I also convene an online master's unit. So when I can find time to myself to actually engage in kind of projects that are going to better myself, I'll just uh, usually crack out some animations for, you know, maybe Alchemist, these friends of mine are in a pretty successful band, they're touring internationally, and that kind of works to get my name out there as well, I think. So it's kind of, it's fairly, uh, I don't think it's parasitic, maybe it's symbiotic relationship, I'm not sure, but that's kind of what, uh, what I do when I can find time to myself, make cool stuff. I saw Alchemist here at the ANU um, in 93. Since then I've had a few opportunities to do stuff for the band. You know, I, I did another animation as part of my master's degree, the creative project, uh, which was a lot of fun. I got, because it was so dedicated, I had six months to build something, I, I really put a lot of time and effort into it. Might be a good opportunity for us to just like boogie on down and, and check out the show. All right. Brett Butler is my housemate and longtime friend. I've known Brett Butler since we were both studying at CIT a good eight years ago. He was in the second year advanced diploma of electronic design and digital imaging. This morning uh, we were totally blown away by those, those flash animations and none of that bizarreness came from the band, that was all Brett's idea. It is fun working with alchemists and the content they generate, but they're love jobs. You know, they don't pay the bills, these things are pretty much just, you know, like I said, their profile helps me to get my profile out there. Um, but you know, like, I've also got this job here at the uni, so that allows me to work with, you know, other creative minds that, that are all, you know, here and, and doing their own stuff, and it's all kind of in really, especially with creative communication, they're doing some very bizarre stuff, so that's really kind of, challenged me and, and up the game for me in terms of, you know, trying to better myself and, and do stuff that, that people haven't seen before. Brett just goes, goes above and beyond what he's expected to do and is always willing to help people and, you know, usually students or whoever appreciate that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, there's a picture painted out there, the stereotypical academic, his cane and his little bifocals hanging off there. And I think it really freaks them out when they walk in there into my shoots and see this guy who looks like me. First year students in particular to walk into a room and, and see someone kind of like me um, is initially, it's probably a little bit of a culture shock to them I reckon. Uh, and they're like, well look at this clown, you know, does he know what he's going to talk? And I think once I get over like the first maybe two weeks they understand that I do know what I'm talking about. You know, I, I don't cut any punches with my students, I'll swear in front of them to say, hey look, this is what I did on the weekend. I think to be a successful teacher, you've actually got to stick your hand up and go, well, here's what I made in it. And if they're like, wow, that's awesome, you go, well, you can make it too. Yeah, one of the, the things I always do when I kind of go into a class is I'll show them something like these alchemist animations and say, look, I don't, you now know that you guys can put anything in front of me. Don't curtail your ideas at all. You know, push them even further. You know, see what I do and, and look to offend and I think that works really well for that kind of relationship between say a tutor or a lecturer and a student they're just like oh geez I don't know whether I should say that well I don't think students feel that way with me I think I show them what I do and they they're just like oh geez look at this guy so they they get a lot of freedom through that I think you know, that whole um, you know creativity should be should be free, you know, it should be you know, able to be expressed. Working here at the uni, it does become a bit of a treadmill. You, you do start to just do your job and, and you can become complacent. And sometimes I feel as though maybe I'm not expanding as, as fast as I'd like to. And, and you become kind of, you know, anchored to the way that things work here in a rather large institution, rather than say, if you're working by yourself, you could just go and do anything you really wanted to. 
um, let alone you know that, that odd job that you do have to do to put food on the table. I'm the guy who says, look, why are you sitting here doing things the old way when there's these great advancements in technology and the way that people do things and streamlining and you guys are sitting back here in the dark ages? I've tried to keep it real for me, you know, keep it attached to my interests. Not to put myself in any stagnant kind of environment to actually make my life interesting through my own pursuits. Uh, I'll just I'll continue to work in education, and as a result, I'll have to continue to learn and be ahead of the the pack because you know the next thing I know, I've got to teach a room full of people. I am an axle around here, and when I I go or if I stop performing that way, the wheels will inevitably fall off. But um. Well, no, I think it's probably probably be a good thing. I think students would learn a, a very important skill, which is work it out yourself. You can't just ask for the answers all the time. It might work for Paris Hilton, you know, but it doesn't work for real people. Basically, the place would be fucked. <laughs> <laughs>